Section One of Romances of Old Japan. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Romances of Old Japan by Ye Theodora Ozaki. The Quest of the Sword, Part One the night was dark and stormy with fast falling rain the very elements in their mad and havoc working frolic across the city of edo seeming to be bent on impending the progress of a tense and lonely figure as on his high clogs he splashed through the muddy streets towards the outskirts of the town jurobei of awa buffeted by the furious gusts of wind and drenched by the rain was hardly aware of discomfort so determined was he to reach his destination the house of shusen sakurai in the shortest possible time as he strode along his mind was busy reviewing the past seven years had elapsed since that unlucky quarrel with one of the enemy's men hundreds of miles away in his native town of tokushima in the province of awa when carried away by his wrath he had impetuously drawn his sword and wounded the man for this misdemeanor he had been ignominiously dismissed by his feudal master shusen sakurai during that long interval he had led a wild swashbuckler's life and had earned a notorious reputation being known everywhere for his deeds of daring as jurobei of awa his one hope however had always been to win shusen's forgiveness and be reinstated in his service his old widowed mother would not die happy unless he were rehabilitated and to this end he knew that she and his faithful wife oyumi prayed daily before the family shrine how often had he racked his brains to find some way by which it were possible to prove his unchanging fidelity to shusen for the true big-hearted fellow never resented his punishment but staunchly believed that the ties which bound him to his lord were in no wise annulled by the separation at last the long-awaited opportunity had come in obedience to the mandate of the shogun ieyasu that the territorial nobles should resign in his newly established capital of edo during six months of the year the daimyo of tokushima proceeded to edo accompanied by a large retinue of samurai amongst whom were his chief retainers the rivals shusen sakurai and gunbei onota like a faithful watchdog alert and anxious jurobei had followed shusen at a distance unwilling to let him out of his sight at this critical time for gunbei onota was the sworn enemy of shusen sakurai bitter envy of his rival's popularity and especially of his senior rank in the daimyo's service had always rankled in the contemptible gunbei's mind for years he had planned to supplant him and jurobei knew through traitors that the honest vigilance of his master had recently thwarted gunbei in some of his base schemes and that the latter had vowed immediate vengeance jurobei's soul burned within him as this sequence of thoughts rushed through his brain the tempest that whirled round him seemed to be in harmony with the emotions that surged in tumult through his heart more than ever did it devolve on him to see that his master was properly safeguarded to do this successfully he must once more become his retainer so jurobei with vehement resolution clenched his hands over the handle of his umbrella and rushed onwards now it happened that same night that gunbei in a sudden fit of jealous rage and chagrin knowing that his rival was on duty at the daimyo's palace and that he would probably return alone after nightfall ordered two of his men to proceed to shusen's house and to waylay and murder shusen on his road home once and for all he would remove shusen sakurai from his path meanwhile jurobei arrived at shusen's house and in the heavy gloom collided violently with the two men who were lying in ambush outside the gate stop angrily cried the assassins drawing their swords upon him jurobei recognizing their voices and his quick wit at once grasping the situation exclaimed you are gunbei's men have you come to kill my lord be assured that that is our intention replied the confederates i pray you to kill me instead of my lord implored jurobei we have come for your master and we must have his life as well as yours 
i have not forgotten how you cut me to pieces seven years ago i shall enjoy paying back those thrusts with interest returned one of them sharply jurobei prostrated himself in the mud before them i care not what death you deal me so long as you accept my life instead of my lord's i humbly beg of you to grant my petition instead of answering one of the miscreants contemptuously kicked him as he knelt there jurobei whose ire was now thoroughly provoked seized the offending leg before its owner had time to withdraw it and holding it in a clutch like iron inquired then you do not intend to grant my request certainly not sneered the wretches jurobei sprang to his feet and faced them without more ado they both set upon him with their weapons overhead the storm increased in violence the floodgates of heaven were opened peals of heavy thunder shook the earth with their dull reverberations and the inky skies were riven with blinding flash upon flash of forked lightning which lit up the dark forms and white faces of the combatants and glinted on their swords as they parried and clashed together in mortal strife now jurobei was an expert swordsman of unusual and supple strength he defended himself with skill and ferocity and soon his superiority began to tell against the craven couple who were attacking him it was not long before they realized that they were no match for such a powerful adversary and turned to flee but jurobei was too quick for them and before they could escape he cut them down mortally wounded both men fell to the ground and so fatal had been jurobei's thrusts that in a few minutes they breathed their last by this time the fury of the storm having spent itself the sky gradually lifted and the moon shone forth in silver splendour between the masses of clouds as they rolled away leaving the vast blue vault above clear and radiant and scintillating with stars jurobei raised a jubilant face heavenwards and thanked the gods for the victory he had rescued his master from death he felt that the sacrifices that he and oyumi have made in the past the breaking up of the old home and the parting from their baby daughter and the old mother had not been in vain the prescience which had warned him that evil was hanging over shusen and which had made him so restless and uneasy of late had been fulfilled and he had forestalled the dastardly intention of the treacherous gunbei and his two scoundrels in the stillness after the tumult of the fray jurobei's ear caught the sound of approaching footsteps turning in the direction from whence they came there in the bright moonlight he clearly discerned the form of his beloved master crossing the bridge oh my lord is it you are you safe he exclaimed who is it demanded the startled samurai ah it is jurobei what brings you here at this hour then noticing the two lifeless bodies lying across the path he sharply interrogated what does this mean has there been a fight what was the cause of the quarrel they are gunbei's assassins they were waiting in ambush for your return by gunbei's order i found them here they attacked me and i killed them both the cowards shusen stared an exclamation of dismay escaped him it is a pity that you should have killed those particular men at this juncture he mused for a few seconds gazing at the dead faces of his would-be murderers i knew these rascals my purpose was to let them go free and to lure them over to our side they could soon have been persuaded to confess the crimes of their master jurobei realized that he had blundered overcome with disappointment he sank upon the ground in a disconsolate heap the intelligence of inferior men cannot be relied upon said jurobei with chagrin alas they unwittingly err in their judgment i did not give the matter enough consideration my sole idea was to save your life at all costs my lord i have committed a grave error in slaying them with the intention of tendering abject apologies from my past misconduct which has lain upon me like a heavy yoke all these years i came here to-night i killed these men to save your life hoping that for this service you would reinstate me i beg of you to forgive my stupidity with these words he drew his sword and was about to plunge it into himself and rashly end his life by harakiri by way of expiation shusen seized his arm and stopped him in the act 
this is not the time to die it would be a dog's death to kill yourself here and now perform some deed worthy of a samurai and then i will recall you as my retainer you are a rash man jurobei in future think more before you act oh my lord do you really forgive me will you indeed spare a life forfeited by many errors committed in your service and jurobei gave a sigh of relief certainly i will replied shusen aware that the affinity existing between lord and retainer is a close relationship not to be lightly severed you were about to throw away your life he continued for what you considered a samurai's duty i commend that anyhow i tell you now to wait until you have accomplished some real work in the world listen to what i have to say from generation to generation the lords of tokushima have entrusted to the care of our house one of their most valuable treasures and heirlooms a talisman of the family the kunitsugu sword at the end of last year we gave a banquet and entertained a large number of friends while the attention of every one was absorbed in waiting upon the guests some robber must have entered the house and stolen the sword for on that night it disappeared in my own mind i have strong suspicions as to who the guilty party may be but as yet there is no proof while i was pondering in secret over possible ways and means of bringing the theft to light another complication has arisen it has come to my knowledge that gunbei our enemy is organizing a conspiracy to make an attack upon the life of my lord the daimyo of tukushima my whole attention must be concentrated on this plot to circumvent which requires very subtle and adroit handling so that it is impossible for me to take any steps in the matter of the sword at the present time there is no one to whom i can entrust this important mission except yourself jurobei if you have any gratitude for all that i have done for you then stake your life your all in the search for the lost sword there is no time to lose this is january and our daimyo's birthday falls on the third of march the sword must be laid out in state on that festive occasion in the palace i shall be disgraced and my house ruined if the sword be not forthcoming that day my duties at the palace make it impossible for me to undertake the search even supposing that i were at liberty to go in quest of the sword to do so would bring about my undoing which is just what our enemy gunbei desires you are now a ronin a masterless samurai you have no master no duty no appearances to maintain your absence from our midst will cause embarrassment to no one therefore undertake this mission i command you and restore the sword to our house if your search is crowned with success i will receive you back into my household and all shall be as it was between us in former times with this assurance sakurai took his own sword from his girdle and handed it to jurobei as a pledge of the compact between them jurobei stretched out both hands received it with joy and reverently raised it to his forehead your merciful words touch my heart though my body should be broken to pieces i will surely not fail to recover the sword replied jurobei he then began to examine the dead men hoping to find their purses for in his new-formed resolution he realized the immediate need of money in his search for the lost treasure stop stop rebuked shusen take nothing which does not belong to you not even a speck of dust kirito rigotowa bushi no narai slaughter and robbery are a knight's practice answered jurobei has been the samurai's motto from ancient times for the sake of my lord i will stop at nothing i will even become a robber in token of my determination from this hour i change my name jurobei to ginjuro nothing shall deter me in my search for the sword to prosecute my search i will enter any houses however large and grand they may be rest assured my lord i will be responsible for the finding of the sword that is enough returned his master you have taken the lives of these two men escape before you are seized and delivered up to justice i obey my lord 
may all go well with you till i give you a sign that the sword is found yes yes have no fear for me take care of yourself jurobei answered shusen jurobei prostrated himself at his master's feet farewell my lord farewell and shusen sakurai and his faithful vassal separated End of section 1. Recording by Maricel Quee.